Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, beautiful people. Honest, I am here, the creator and writer of the Honestly Sis newsletter, a bi weekly newsletter geared towards millennials who are truly trying to get their shit together. And I am back for another daily motivational video where we use the tarot to become the alchemist of our lives and to teach us how to become spiritual beings. Um, and I guess I want to do a little bit of a housekeeping item. So I know you guys have been noticing that the videos have been just a little bit more sporadically coming out. Um, and honestly, it's just because I think I'm just prioritizing other things in my life right now. Angel number 35. Unfortunately, I haven't been getting the feedback that I would like from um, YouTube. And I'm just realizing that YouTube is hard. You know, it's actually a commitment. Um, and instead of not doing this, I think I'm going to continue to do this. Um for myself or you know you or whoever else may need these videos um but i'm not going to try to like um i'm not doing the the effort like make sure i have it out every week and they're like i just can't i'm not doing that anymore and it's not because i don't believe in this engine number 11 11 it's just because i just have to be more mindful and more um and more um you know, just be more mindful of my time and like how much energy I have and not just pour out things so much especially for things that's not giving back to me so if you said that you felt like what the fuck you know just start talking to me I don't know like the video more comment on it build a relationship I don't know make me inspire me <laughs> you know if not this would just be like my personal diary that I'll keep up here forever and it just be it, it'll be what it is okay Anyways, um, so I am recording this video on Friday, December the 9th. Um, we are still in the energy of Gemini. This is the last full moon of the year. Gemini rules the, um, Gemini is called the messenger and astrology. Um, it rules the second house, which is our house of our partnerships, our house of family, um, and material possessions and things like that. Um, and because we're like so still in the energy, we're on the tail end of the year, I think I'm going to do something a little bit differently and I'm going to kind of do a um, past, present, future spread for us. And so in this spread, I'm going to look at, you know, where we're coming out of 2002, what we had to deal with here in 2003 and what we kind of have to look forward to in 2023. So asking God, what is this, you know, full moon really getting us ready for and full moons are good for releasing. And so I think I'm going to add, make this like kind of a blockage reading to see what we need to release in order to be prepared and ready for the new year. So dear God, guardian angels and ancestors, and tell me as quickly as we know how to just ask you, what do we need to know going into 2023? What potential blocks may be in the way or what may be, you know, rewarded to us? What information do you deem ready for us here at this time? Please deliver these messages to me and through me as clear as possible. In God's name, I pray. Okay. All right, give us three cards. Okay, oh, all right, give us one more. One last card, please. What's coming for 2023? What's coming for 2023? What is coming for 2023? All right, oh, I like it. All right, so the three cards that came out is trust, understanding, and efficiency and if i'm going to read this in my uh past present and future i'm seeing that in 2022 we were really working on learning how to trust god learning how to work with god learning how to you know maybe understand our spiritual walk now i mean learning how to trust the spiritual side and then this year in 2023 we've really been not only learning how to work with the spiritual side but really learning how to understand it and so it makes me think about those messages about you know what are the signs what what is the language of the universe i do feel like i um if you are a big person uh if you ever read the alchemist there's a section of the book where he's out in the desert and he's be and he's told you have to learn the language of the universe. Um, and so I do, I, I dream, the reason why I study the alchemist is because I feel like it's just a metaphor for life. And I feel like, you know, in 2022, we were working on learning how to trust, you know, God, trust our journey, trust where we were going in life. And now we're trying to understand how to really work with God, really work with the spiritual side. Like, and so I feel like to apply this to your life, like maybe in 2022 or in the last couple of few months, like you've really been trying to 
uh, work on trusting that your path is your path, trusting that God wants this for you, trusting that you're worthy enough for it. And then this year you have been really working on trying to understand your path and try to understand how you can work with the spiritual side, understanding how to understand in the languages of the universe, because we literally have this, this, uh, Cuddy, you know that's not how you sit on there. So do not start. Don't you know how to sit up there properly? I'm sorry, y'all. Angel number five, 26. Apol sorry for my nails. I missed my nail appointment, so they look a mess. Anyway, so understanding is literally this angel here, you know, sitting here reading. And so that's again about learn understanding the languages of the universe and not even Maybe not, let's not say the universe because I feel like I, you can say that and that becomes like this big woo woo thing. We have been working on understanding um, how to work with our spirit team. How do your spirit team work with you? I know like my spirit team, we started off, that's why I do angel numbers. Angel numbers were a big thing. And honestly, I feel like angel numbers are the entry point to a lot of people's spiritual journey. And so that's why they say, if you start seeing 1111 and 222 and like all of these things, yeah, it does mean it can be certain activations in your body code. But I also just feels like it's just making you aware that you there's a life bigger than the life that you're currently living. So you'll start with the angel numbers. And then this year, um, I really feel like along with the angel numbers, um, I got feathers. I spoke about that on this uh, channel. Birds. Um, and, and this year, the most unique thing that I've been learning is that my um, guides have been talking to me through books and like the literature that I have been reading and like, if I went down the line on how, matter of fact, I'll just give you an example. Um, I was, you know, this summer I picked up this book called Untamed. And it's just, I have a, like a, a local neighborhood bookstore near, uh, like a little, you know, like how they had a neighborhood bookstore. So I take one, I drop one off. I actually got some books I need to drop off. Um, and the book was there. And I originally thought it was like a sex novel. I'm being honest. I thought it was like an erotica novel. And it actually ended up being a self, not really a self-help book, but a book of essays by Gwendolyn Dole. And like this book completely blew my mind. Um, not just in a way of, um, you know, not just from the information that it gave me, engine number 731, but it blew my mind on a writing level like it helped me realize that I was really like being more preachy in my writing and it taught me that you don't have to do that it taught me to just trust the story um trust the story that I'm telling um and then I remember listening to a podcast and somebody said the Silver, Silver Sparrow was their favorite book and so I went and purchased that book because I am just, whenever somebody says, that's my favorite book, I'm like, I want to hear it. I want to read it because whenever somebody, you know, because it's like so many books and to say that something is your favorite book, like it has to, it has to be something that's profound about that book to be that. So anyways, I'm getting on a tangent. It's <laughs> already love it. Um, but anyway, so I picked up this book, Silver Sparrow, and it's all about, um, you know, this dad and him having, you know, this whole other family and like one family knowing about it, another not knowing about it. And long story short, it just made me have this like really big revelation about my father. And so I, you know, like I learned that my guides, my spirit team, whatever you want to call it, God speaks to me through endless avenues. Like he's not limited to Bible. He's not limited to angel numbers. He's not limited um, to birds, like with these books, it really have been blowing my mind, but I've been realizing that he has been working with me through books. So whether I'm reading a book and thinking that it's going to, you know, help my book that I'm writing, or it may just help me what I'm going through. And so I feel like that's what we've been working on in 2023. We've been really trying to understand how to speak and you know like really how to communicate and how to really pick up on these subtle cues from these subtle um clues from the spiritual side because i have a quote that there's no such thing as a coincidence there's no such thing as um yeah there's no such thing as a coincidence like god the universe is always talking to you it's just a coincidence when you finally notice and so that's what we've been working on in 2023 I mean, in 2022, and as we go into 2023, what we're going to be working on is efficiency. And so here we literally had, it's so funny, I've been talking about reading books and it's like this angel sitting here. Uh, it looks like they're taking a break um, or reading some stuff, they're working. 
Um, and so that's what I feel like 2023 is going to be all about. Now that we trust God, now that we uh, trust our path, now that we under, now that we trust God, now that we understand our path, now that we understand why we're here and that we're spirit beings, now we're going to learn how to put this into action. So to me, with this word of efficiency, to me, it feels like God is like, now it's time to really tap into your power. And though it says efficiency, for some reason, I'm hearing the word embodiment. And so now we're going to take all of that trust we're going to take all of that understanding and we're going to use that use our spiritual tools to make our life more efficient okay all right angel number two uh 10 23 i mean i'm loving this so far like i just am really excited it feels very validating and i'm interested to see where god has us going from here all right, God, clarify this message of trust, understanding, and efficiency. What do we need to know about the year that we left, the year that we're in, and the year that we're heading to? God, allow no room for doubt or confusion in me or the viewer's mind. What do we need to know at this time? I love this. So this is like a, a year view highlight, I guess. I'll take it. I'll keep it that way. All right. <laughs> yes, and underneath this is judgment. So uh, I love this because, first of all, the judgment is a twinning card and it deals with partnership. And so I feel like, remember, I was going back to, I was saying that this Gemini um, full moon is in, it rules the second house of partnerships. And so I do feel like uh, there's going to be some type of judgment for some reason with this yellow here, with the red and the white. It's just giving me this energy of because you stood into your power, because you not only trusted yourself, because you stood in your power, now the trumpets are blowing. God is about to issue this brand new uh, judgment on your life. And for some reason, when I get this energy of judgment. It To me, it means... To me, I'm getting the energy of like reward of like, you know how they say, you know, a lot of times we get, we say karma is a bitch, which we should not say that because the truth is if you've been doing the work to trust yourself, been doing the work to heal yourself, if you've been every single day trying to be the best that you can, then your karma is good because that's what you've been working on. And so judgment day comes through and you, you're able to reap all of those good rewards, right? Angel number 12, 35, 34. But I'm actually going to go to the book because I'm curious to see what this is, the judgment card means. Okay, judgment, a time to pay for what has been done, a time to begin a fresh and new, the price has been paid and now begin again can indicate legal matters ending successfully. So like I was saying, you have done all of this work and now I feel like in the new year, you're going to be able to reap the rewards. Now you're going to see what happens when you really come, when you really trust God, when you really listen to those subtle cues, when you really move from intention all of all of all of that all of that is about to come to you now going back to these cards for in 2022 you were dealing with trust which we have the four swords coming out so again maybe there was a lot of things you had to let go i know i had a crazy uh 2020 oh hold on wait this is my bad 2021 2021 which is um you know we were still kind of in that weird space with covid we were still trying to you know figure out life are we outside are we inside is covid over is covid still here and so we were in just this really weird space of where we were mourning our past life mourning our way of communicating with others mourning the life that we needed that we used to have angel number 1355 and so that's why in 2021 god has was really working on us to just trust that that he's asked you to lay this to rest for a reason. Trust that he's removing certain things and certain ways of being in the world for a reason, right? And your number 411, 1411. And so now as we move into 2022, uh, what came out is the queen of coins and it came out reverse. And the reason why I feel like it came out reverse is because not because you're not worthy or because you haven't done the work. I feel like in, tw it, in 2022, you were understanding how to learn your worth. You were understanding what it means to nurture yourself. You were understanding what it means to really feel confident and grounded in what you have and who you are in the world. And so now that you've done that work, now that you're 
you're moving into 2023, you're in this place of the Seven of Cups. And to me, I feel like I see this card and I see the Seven of Cups and I, um, and I feel like it's like you're grounded in your emotions. And to me, it just feels like he, to me, it looks like mastery a little bit. Normally the Seven of Cups is like all about confusion and, you know, uh, maybe a little bit of scattered. You don't know what to do. But to me, it just feels like this man is grounded in water, which means he's grounded in his emotions. These uh, little Winsley things makes me think about the spirit in like these cups and it's like he because he's grounded in he's in his in his in the depth of his emotions because he's connecting with spirit because he understands spirit because he trusts spirit now he's able to you know he's able to like well you know you know wing his power any way that he see fits like he's able to be more efficient in what he choose to give his energy into that's what it is that's what it is because now that we trust to let go of our old life, right? And now that we learn to understand and cultivate our sense of self-worth and knowing that we do have the ability to accomplish prosperity, to have longevity, we know that we can do all this if we just have the patience, if we just stay focused on where we're going. And because we're doing that now as we're moving in 2023, because we're, we have that trust, we have that understanding, we're grounded in our emotions, we know all about our spiritual tools, now we're learning how to more efficiency, more how to efficiently use our energy, how to efficiently pour our energy into certain endeavors. And so it reminds me, agent number 1640, like how I begin it, how I first begin this whole reading about saying, okay, guys, I know that, you know, I love this. It's not really giving, it's not giving to me like I want it to give to me. And so I can't give to it as much as I, you know, I'm being mindful of my energy, just like I was telling y'all at the beginning of the reading. And so I feel like in 2023, because you're uh, trusting God and because you learn how to understand understand and work with the spiritual guy, you're going to be way more efficient in the moves that you wake. And that's why this judgment card is here because you know how to be. And that's why this judgment card here with this 20 and this partnership, it's like, you know, when you put your energy into certain things, certain things are going to give back to you abundantly. Right? Yeah. Angel number 27, 20, uh, angel number 17, 27. Yeah. So I just feel like what God is saying in, in 2023 is going to be all about being very mindful what we give our energy into. Um, and it makes me think about a reading that I did about like, I forgot whatever this reading I did, it was like, we don't have time to be negative or you have to be, you know, you got to be very, very mindful what you give your energy to. And so if I could give you any advice, I would say, uh, if I could give you any advice, what I would say is that in 2023, you need to um, just be mindful, be choosy, um, cr start creating patterns, start, I want you, I guess this is what I want you to do is start keeping track on how you're spending your energy and what you're giving your energy to. So are you giving your energy to things that feed you or are you giving it to your energy to things that deplete you? If you start, if you give your energy to things that deplete you, that's your, this is why this queen of cups, this queen of coins is going to be reversed and it's going to stay reversed because you're not being efficient with your energy. But if you be picky, you be choosy, you put your energy into things that feed you, it will feed you back and you will be well on your way. All right. Okay. Over 1845. So that is the reading. I told you guys I was going to end this reading with a blockage just to see actually. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do a blockage and then we'll do a tool and that'll wrap it up. Um, really quickly, dear God, guardian angels and ancestors, what if, what, what blockages or what do we need to be aware of going in 2023 about trust, understanding, efficiency, the four of swords, queen of one, the queen of coins reverse and the seven of cups along with the judgment. God, what do you want us to know about us being able to be in this time of where things are changing and we can turn anew? Why is it so important to be mindful of what we give our energy into? Why are you asking that? Why did the queen of coins come out reverse? Please give us any information that you deem worthy or you feel fit for us to know. In God's name I pray, Ashe. Angel number 
just like it just clarify everything I said. Yeah. Okay. So underneath this is forgiveness. Angel number 1955. This is what I'm going to focus on. But really quickly, we came out with the four of swords is the perfection. Uh, perfection. This deals with um, this deals with our uh, root chakra. Uh, so all the way at the bottom. And this is the one speaking. And so I feel like what God is saying is that we have to be mindful of how we speak over our dreams and like not really trying to be so perfected like be a be, be a perfectionist like just trust that the work that you're doing is enough and just learn to let go uh and here what came out for 2022 again what i was telling y'all about the queen of coins what came up is passion so again this year we were really working on learning how to understand how to work our passions understanding how to trust that the universe has our back and trusting the universe to get us to our dreams and because we've done all that work of not knowing that we don't have to be perfect and trusting that god will take care of everything as long as we let it go as we go into 2023 we're going to be more efficient in how we work with the spiritual side and being more mindful of how we, you know, what we give our energy to. So, yeah. And this is, and this is, again, this is a purple card. The purple card, um, I want to say it deals with mastery or it deals with the third eye chakra. I'm going to just double check that one. Well, oh yeah, it don't matter because we got forgiveness here because this is our final one. So forgiveness, learning to see without sight. So I feel like 2023 is going to be a big year about having faith, embodying that faith, and just walking as though things are already done. And so um, I am going to read a little bit. The sixth chakra, the sixth chakra represents our sixth sense. All the cards in the purple color, all of the, all. All of the cards in a purple color, ray, indigo, and violet appear in this chapter. The bile chakra, the third eye house, is often uh, is the third high, the third eye. The brow chakra is the third eye and houses all that is hidden within without including our intuitive knowing. The cards often reveal family agreements made before you were born and karmic issues which you have been brought into this world to work out. With this card of forgiveness, it is the rhino and it says amethyst protects us from toxic situation situations. This card indicates healing and allowing yourself to return to the natural state of peace once again. Remember, we never forgive others. We only forgive ourselves for loving others who betray us. This is a time of personal evolution, which I was telling you guys all about that. This is going to be a really, really, really good year. Um, we have never, we never forgive others. We only forgive, we never forgive others. We only, only ourselves for having judged them. Never, we never forgive others, only others for having judged them. The legend. In the town of Amethyst lives uh, Rhino, excuse me. In the town of Amethyst lives Rhonda Rhino. She doesn't take her mother's drinking problems personally, but she dreams of becoming a beloved family pet. One day gunfire rings out, Rhino scatters, and a small child is caught up in the chaos. Rhonda picks him up and runs to safety. Humans discover the pair curled up asleep under a tree and they shoot Rhonda with a sleeping dart. When she awakens, she is in a garden with the little boy and his family, Rhonda's new family. Rhonda's true essence lies not in harboring resentment. She transcends forgiveness because her focus is on her intention, not on her pain. This may be a time of family healing. Can I forgive myself for loving those who hurt me? And this made me think about what I was saying in 2021. We had to deal with a lot of stuff about grief and letting go. And so I feel like the advice is what God is asking us, the blockage that we have to deal with is forgiveness. And again, it made me think about recently I was watching Wednesday and she said something, um, it was like she was trying to escape from school and Ingrid had, she was leaving with this boy that she really didn't even know. Like she just met at a coffee shop and Ingrid was like, how do you know if you can trust them? And she was like, uh, I know, I know I can try. She's like, no, she was just like, I trust myself. I trust that I can take care of myself. And I think that's what we have to understand. I think our issue and our problem in our society nowadays, or, you know, fuck that. I'm not going to speak in general terms. I'm going to speak about myself. I know my issue in the past has always been about me feeling like I, if I can trust another person, 
I will always be in relationships. And if I'm being honest, I was a toxic ass partner because I didn't trust that person. And the truth was, it wasn't that I didn't trust that person. I didn't trust myself. I didn't trust my intuition. I didn't trust my feelings. I didn't trust, you know, I I couldn't trust that this person loved me. I couldn't believe it because of like all of my fucked up shit that I was going through. And so moving forward, I realized that it's not a matter of, you know, me wondering if I can get in partnerships with people and if I can trust them or if they're going to dog me out or even like being worried about meeting friends that may use me, Andrew number 2525. Like the thing that I'm really starting to understand is, is about learning how to trust myself, learning how to forgive myself and learning how to understand that, you know, I had to go through certain things. I had to have certain situations happen to me in order for me to see it clearly, in order for me to like really, really get it. Like, um, I'm going to be honest, like I was feeling like I had gotten to it with my ex on Thanksgiving and he said something to me like, oh, um, what did he say? He's like, we broke up almost five years ago. And it was like, first of all, it was so jarring And, like, I was so mad that immediately, you know, I went to defense mode, tack, tack, tack. But then afterwards, I realized, like, I was really mad at myself because, wow, next year it'll be four years. It's been three years. And I realized that I've been still kind of going back and forth and being in this cycle. And, like, him saying that was like a slap in my face because it, at first, it made me feel like, damn, like, I've been, like, wasting my life for three years or, like, I've just been an idiot for three years. I've been naive for three, like, you know, all of this shit, not for, you know, beating myself up instead of realizing, like, after I was able to get past that, I realized, like, yeah, it's been three years, but, like, I healed in those three years. Like, those three years, that was me really getting you out of your out of my system. Those, those three years, that was me, you know, letting go of all of that. Oh, it will get better. It won't get better. Like, I know for a while. You know, like, now at the end, I'm, I'm not only healed. I not only broke up with you. I broke up with the pattern. I broke up with this way of life. I was able to get to the core. I was able to see that I've been chasing love. Or I was able to see that, you know, I honestly put so much into this relationship without any proof of it. Was it even reciprocal? Was it even given to me that the way that I was giving it to it? Like what made me think that this was going to be this when I was never getting what I really needed? And so it's like moving forward. I'm more mindful of, I have to be more mindful of how I love and how I give my power away. And so it's like, now it's not about forgiving him. It's about forgiving myself because when we did get into it, I was like beating myself up and like crying. Cause I'm like, I'm just so fucking stupid. I'm so naive. I'm so this, this. And it's just like, you know what? No, like I, I as much as I do wish that I was the type of girl that could just you know, break up with somebody and be fine. Like I also realized like these last three years, every single year I can, I can pinpoint, oh, in 2021, this is when I first started to go on solo trips and start getting myself out my bubble in 2022. I did, you know, I finally got my yoga class and now I was going, you know, so it's like just recognizing that while it may have felt and on the outside it looked like I was stuck or it looked like nothing was happening, there was actually a, a whole lot of shit that was happening. And it makes me think about that the um, the process of a seed and like of a plant blooming and like you think nothing is going on. Like this seed is buried in the earth and ain't shit going on, on, the, on to the surface world until that tiny green spout. But there's so much shit, so much growth, so much, it's so much things that have to push through for that green spout to even come out. And so I feel like that's what we've been doing these last three years. We've been cultivating all of this work to just heal ourselves, to better ourselves. And in 2023, we're going to start bursting to the surface. And in order to survive when we're up there and in order to really thrive in this, we have to learn to not only forgive, not to forgive others, but to forgive ourselves and to learn how to not worry about trusting others and worrying about other people, but realizing that the world is nothing but a reflection of you. So as long 
long as you do that internal work, everything externally will take care of itself. And that's why I said in 2021, that's why you have to do the work of learning how to trust God, learning how to trust the universe, learning how to understand it. Because once you can understand that foundation, then this is when we start really embodying what it means to be a spiritual being. So that that is the reading for uh today my advice for you look creation in 2023 is all about newness it's all about uh renewal look is this renewal <laughs> bam it's all about renewal i was saying that it wasn't miracles look it's nothing but it's letting go of these victim mentalities and realizing that we have the ability to take control of our life and so I'm so excited. My advice for you would be to just really think about, you know, what, how your life has been going for the last three years. What are some of the work that you have been doing? You know, what are you actually, I mean, I, I recently was listening to the Quinta and, um, Oprah show and it reminds me about the power of intention what are your intentions for 2023 have you set intentions you know in the past um and how have that worked out for you this is a time that we really need to be doing review so that we can be prepared as we hit the ground running in 2023 okay all right, y'all, that is all the read. That's all the information I have for you. If you made it to the end of the reading, give me a thumbs up. If you made it to the end of this reading, you are not subscribed. What the fuck are you waiting for? Because I got lots of good knowledge coming for you. Until we meet again, dream those dreams. Never let the internet rush you and never, ever let someone tell you what you cannot do. Take care. Namaste.